Meeting to order at uh, 6.09. Not too bad. Um, Zach? Hi, everybody. We're gathered here today to discuss one of our site. Uh, last month's minutes, did people get a chance to look at those? Sure. Zach, I liked your uh, email. A little terse, a little. Tonight, no, tonight's meeting's tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, just for clarification. Yeah, okay. Why you're in now? All right. Are you uh, ready with the minutes? I don't remember the date, bro. Four twenty-one. No. Make a motion to approve the minutes. January 3rd. January 3rd. Yeah. Okay, have a motion made. Second. We have a motion made second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. We got four zeros, Zach. Neat. All right. Director's report. Um, we'll start with that. The other agenda items, the F20 budget is at the end of the report, so I figured we'd just segue into that. Um, Update on AMR's takeover in Greenfield. Uh, since that significant spike in mutual aid and intercept requests that we received from them at the end of January, uh, it's dropped back off. Um, I'd say countywide, it's not yet returned to the previous level of requests that they were making to the outside agencies. But as far as South County EMS concerns, uh, I think it is pretty consistent with what we had before. And it's, it hasn't been uh, causing any sort of ongoing stress for us here. We're still available for our three constituent towns. So um, our neighbors to the north, they're still trying to resolve their EMS availability concerns. But South County EMS down here, we're, uh, we're in a good spot. And we haven't had any discussions or anything about sharing of resources or anything like that. Uh, we met at the county level, FERCOG, Franklin Regional Council of Governments, called a large meeting to discuss the countywide public safety radio system. Uh, there's still a lot of unknowns out there, but what we do know is that our current system is outdated and dangerously close to failing. Um, multiple ideas were discussed, either well, multiple two. Well, one was rebuilding our system, and the other one is to transitioning to the statewide public safety system that's actually already built out in the county. Uh, it's my professional opinion that we would be best off uh, supporting the transition to the existing system for technical safety and financial reasons. Um, just for, based on the numbers supplied by FERCOG, if we were to rebuild our own system, which would technically be a duplicate system in the county, our um, assessment to the FERCOG for South County EMS I think would be $60,000 a year to support um, our portion of it, which is tenfold larger than what we're, we're paying now. Um, so is that, that's to transition to the state system? That would be to rebuild it ourselves. Oh, that's rebuild. Yes. What, the last meeting that I was at, for Cog when he was speaking about the radio, there was some talk that the state is really paying for almost all of it to be done, except for Franklin and part of Pittsfield counties and Persia counties. And I didn't know if anybody's ever followed up on that. I, this, we, the, my understanding is, and I'm not part of the radio committee, but my understanding is we as a county applied for a grant to do an engineering study to see what we needed to do to fix our system and, and, and make it more robust. And the state denied the grant on the grounds of, no, our mission is to get you on our system, which we've already built, so we're not gonna give you the money for the study. Um, their system is statewide. Um, there are local municipalities and organizations in Worcester County and out in Barnstable County that have been on their system up to a decade. Um, so there's precedent for it, they're happy with it, and the state system in Franklin County is actually um, further along technology-wise than the rest of the county. So maybe what you, or rest of the state rather, so maybe what you were hearing was that they're not going to, they've already actually added technology in Franklin County, so the next round of investments are really going to occur elsewhere in the state. 
um, because we're already up to that, that new standard. Uh, the concerns were, well, what's the time frame on that, um, which the state has given a, their verbal war word that they will take us on. Um, but I think part of that is they don't want to commit resources or time until they know we're going to commit resources and time and everybody's just kind of in a holding pattern until somebody says, this is what we're doing. Um, and there were some concerns about holes in the state coverage. Um, those align right now with the holes in our current system. And so if I'm going to be spending $60,000 as a department to build a duplicate system out, I think it would be reasonable if communities maybe pitched in to fill those holes for ourselves or something like that instead of rebuilding a whole system. So. Well, we, to, to upgrade, isn't it just the, ra I thought it, our portion would be just the radio. Correct. Okay. Correct. Um, the, I just responded to a survey about how many radios we currently have and we would need um, that went out to all the departments so they can get an idea about possible grant money or what that would look like. Um, but even if we had to buy all the radios ourselves, that would be a fraction of the cost of our first year assessment under our own system. So. Yeah. Uh, the International, the 2010, which is the topic of much conversation recently, is back out of service. Uh, it's down in West Springfield. The parking brake failed on it a couple of days ago. That's important because that medium duty, heavy duty chassis, the transmission doesn't have a, like a park. It just has drive and neutral. So the way you park that vehicle is you put it in neutral, it's an Allison transmission. You pu put it in neutral and then you pull the air brakes and that that's how you park it. Um, so that air brake portion went out. Um, so we brought it down to nutmeg. Um, there's also a problem with the steering box, really excessive play in the steering um, and to a degree where it was just unsafe to operate in an emergency. So that's gonna be a $3,200 bill to repair both of those things. Um, and we should see that unit back. It's Tuesday, maybe by the end of the week or the beginning of next week. Uh, until we get that truck back, um, we won't be able to do any additional outreach or community services that require department vehicle, um, but we didn't have any plan this week, so it was <coughs> okay timing on that. We still have two ambulances available for our 911 responses. I think I mentioned this in January, um, but <coughs> Deerfield Emergency Management Director Lori Lankowski, she's a recent appointee to that position. She's a firefighter paramedic and a paramedic uh, on our roster here at South County. She got a grant to supply the public safety agency, public safety agencies in Deerfield with bleeding and hemorrhage control kits. Um, and South County EMS provided the stop the bleed training on how to use those kits to all the local public safety departments. So we've concluded that. Um, both fire districts in the town, South County EMS, the police department all have these kits and are all trained now. Um, I've still got the Stop the Bleed training we're gonna be doing at the elementary school coming up and we are available to do this training still elsewhere. So if there's anybody in the community, Deerfield Center and Wheatley, who would like to uh, wanna know more about that tra training or like to receive it, they're welcome to reach out to me at South County EMS and I'm sure we can set something up. And just as of yesterday, um, I was contacted by a woman who conducts service dog training, and it's actually training for the individuals who receive their dogs and the dogs themselves. So the dog's already trained by another organization, now they're kind of ma matched up with somebody. Um, and so she does multi-day classes um, for those individuals. and we acknowledged kind of a hole in their training about what were to happen if any of these people needed an ambulance. What, what do we do with the service dog? How does the service dog relate? Um, what happens, does the person, are they able to give commands to the service dog when they're on the stretcher? All those types of things. Um, so she's gonna be taking her class basically on a field trip here. Um, we're working on a dates for that, but I have a full-time person, Aliyah Kuzma, who's taken the lead on coordinating that and offering the class. So we'll be using our third ambulance uh, to provide that um, interface class. And hopefully we'll be able to identify areas for future repeat co cooperation with that. So that's very exciting. 
Uh, let's see. The latest draft budget, um, dated February 8th, 2019. This went out just before I presented it to the Sunderland Select Board at the beginning of the month. So this is the second version so far. The changes included in that were um, the, I'm gonna call them hard numbers from the Town of Deerfield HR and Accountant's Office on the benefit costs, as well as the um, indirect costs, as well as including a uh, step increase and 2% COLA for all the staff based on the consideration that might be the vote by the town of Deerfield. Um, I also increased the revenue estimation in that version from $500,000 to $525,000. Uh, as we said before, I've always been a little um, anxious of bumping our <coughs> estimations up too far because we don't know what the health insurance market is going to do. And because we're an enterprise fund, any money that we receive over what our estimations are, <coughs> we can apply back to lowering the assessments. So it gives us the ability to be conservative on our estimations and then not punish the community in the following year because that money will keep things um, level on the assessment side. Um, but I thought 500000 to 525 was an appropriate um, so the town give you <coughs> on what the insurance? Yes, yes. That is included in the. Get my glasses back on to read that. That is included in the latest budget. The Excel sheet. Yes. Do you have copies of that, Zach? I sure do. I get. I looked at it. But... Did you Did you realize that tonight's meeting is tonight? <laughs> I was unsure. I figured that, I'd take a chance. That it wasn't tonight, far. Is that tonight's night? Is tonight the night or tonight's night? night. Yeah, yeah, tonight's yeah. meeting is this tonight, evening. Tonight. Um, okay, so. Uh, so basically, in all, the employee benefits went up three and a half percent from FY 2019, um, and that is. Where is that? There were, were, were. At the top, under personnel class. Oh, so from 193 to 200. Correct. 193,314 <coughs> in fiscal year 19, up to $200,082. Wait, but. I'm seeing. Because you're adding up, correct? I'm looking at my formulas here, age 20 to 8. Yeah. Yeah. So that's an increase of just shy of $7,000. Mm -hmm. But you've got an increase on medical insurance of a little over five. Correct. And you've got an increase in retirement of 10. Oh, but you're dropping on workers' comp. I, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, there's what is eight thousand dollar drop on workman's comp. Is a contingency a percentage? Uh, overall workers' comp. I don't think so. No, it can't be ten percent. No, I think that was just yeah. rounding around twenty five. So, retirement is, who's, who, who, what system are we with? County. Franklin, Franklin County. The Franklin County or Hampshire County? Franklin. 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 And that's out of our control, obviously. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. But they chose, did they change their, because I know at Han Hampshire right now, they were to trying to decide between increasing the overall premium and increasing, and not increasing the premium, but simply increasing deductibles okay. and co-pays and things like that. And they went with the increase in the deductible and co-pay. Was that discussion, did that discussion take place with, in Franklin or you don't know? I have no idea. Okay. We should probably know those things going forward so that we 
if, if any employees ask, mm -hmm. we have an intelligent response. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any type of HR related, benefit related, all those questions I always refer to Barbara Hancock at the town of Deerfield. That makes sense, yeah. Um, And the medical insurance, are those premium increases or are those staffing increases? Number, we haven't had any carried. staffing increases. So it's not numbers carried, it's st strictly premium increase? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have any staffing changes from 2019 or even. No, but not right. staffing changes, but someone suddenly decides that they want well, coverage. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. Before. From family. Yeah. To Whatever. To it family is. from that, I don't know either. Um, I'm sorry to keep asking. Questions. No, please, please, please. That's what we're here for. Your the the rent. Where are you? I'm oh, on no. halfway G, down the page. G forty, you know, three, four, five. Yep. Mm -hmm. We're not. All of a sudden, when it's not, there's no formula there. I'm assuming that the sum of 44, 45, and 46 is equal to 43, but I just have a number here. Uh, that number is based on the lease agreement of $36,000. It's just that in previous years, it was broken down to the specific Deerfield, South Deerfield Fire, Sutherland Fire. So that 36 total rent should, should just be, there should be a line item somewhere. Because it's not adding; it's just a number. It's ju it's just the thirty six thousand. I should have blocked out those boxes below it because they're no longer relevant in FY twenty. Okay. <clears throat> Can in, and I, and I'm sorry to be a a, a pest about this. Yeah. In the future. Can, the cells be formula driven as opposed to. It, 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 I get that the addition was made, but it doesn't. It looks like you used a calculator to add up the numbers as opposed to having the spreadsheet do the addition for you. Uh, in uh, on my spreadsheet, it's all formula based, so I don't know if something got stripped. Which fields are you looking I'm at? I'm looking at most of the the majority of the fields. Oh well, the majority they're, of they're the, all numbers. They're not sure. The the majority of the individual line items. No, it's it's used fiscal nineteen rent, okay, which was a total of fifty two eighty seven. Mm -hmm. You had thirty five thousand for South Deerfield Fire. You had seven uh, eleven oh eighty seven for Sunderland Fire, and you had three thirty two hundred for Waitley Fire. Mm -hmm. I'm sure those add up to fifty thousand two hundred eighty seven, but the spreadsheet didn't do that adding. Okay, um. And then the same thing was true for, if you look at G32, $8,000 for medical equipment, uh, RPRS, MTNC. I get $1,000 for radio and repairs and $7,000 in preventative maintenance equals $8,000. Mm -hmm. But it's not formula driven. It's eight, it, the number 8,000 is written in there. And it just that... I know that when my finance committee takes a look at it like this, potentially they're going to say, "Well, how?" They're not going to want to go back and do the addition themselves. G G forty, whatever. No, anything. just look right now at G at, at G thirty two. Is eight thousand dollars. G thirty three and G thirty four are respectively one thousand and seven thousand, which I understand adds yeah, eight thousand. So this, I see what you're saying. If you go to H. 32, you see how it's formula driven there. This spreadsheet was supplied to me by, yeah, our, town. by our town accountant, oh. and I think maybe the formulas got stripped from the previous years. Okay. I, um, I'm not trying to be a nudge, I just- No, 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 I, I, you're not. I totally, I totally get it. The current year is all formula driven, and that's how it, 
we present it. I don't know why the formulas were stripped from the previous fiscal years okay. on this spreadsheet. That would be a question for the town accountant. Okay, I'm just, I'm just, just kind of curious because yeah. otherwise so my, it's my nature to say, okay, is the, is the addition right? Yeah, right. Definitely. So so, so for me, Zach, mm -hmm. uh, if you could, I, I think next year, you're probably going to have to take the spreadsheet and go this way with it. Mm -hmm. And, and, <laughs> yeah. and, but like, like you, you know, you, you see, so you have twenty, you know, have twenty twenty budgets, right? Yeah. So it'd be nice if we saw another another uh, line with the amount of increase and the percentage of increase. Okay. That, yeah. Yeah. And and, and and that way, I I like I do like that you're keeping the history there, you know, and and probably and we probably should have like seven or eight years history. I, I think it would be nice. I usually that's what we keep. Mm -hmm. That's why I said you probably need, you're probably end up taking it like this. Um, but I think you, if you turn it and put it on, on a landscape, I think you'd be able to get, and if you put that, you know, the total amount and then the percentage would be nice to see sure. also. And, and on top of that, again, this is just for, for next year, so that we can, again, for history, 2019, I'm assuming the numbers under 2019 are actual. That was what was passed for the budget. That was what was passed for the budget. Yes. Yeah. So, so that's the plan. Right. The actual expenses are not included on this. Okay. This so, is just, yeah. But if I'm creating a, and, and well, that's a good point. people no. work for me, it just, it drives, I drive them crazy because I don't know whether the 2020 numbers are fictitious or not. I'm sure they're not. I'm just... How do I know? Oh, no, no, that, that, that you're right. Yeah. I will get you, I can forward you that spread. I have a working spreadsheet that I put in expenses to date and actual expenses that, yeah, you know, so you're, it's you're, like this. You're so following, I can, you're yes, following. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, then, so then I can see and say, oh, of course it's going to be, I'm going to pick a number. Of course medical insurance is going to be 50,000, or that's not a good idea. Um, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I see exactly what you're saying. Yeah. 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 I, oh, yeah. We're spending that. This, so it's going to be that again next year. Right. But if you're way under or way over, then oh, why is it? Yeah. There. Well, and, 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 and especially in, in budgets, what I always look for is look, look for the numbers that never change. Right. Why don't they ever change? Right. Because, right, because it's like, well, do you get too much? in that budget are are you using that line item does it need to be there or is it where people or departments kind of exactly go back and exactly because what 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 i don't want to have is a budget that well we just borrowed from another line item mm -hmm. well that's all well and good mm -hmm. for paying our bills but how does that help us with budget planning down the road right. if we're borrowing from one line item to pay because we underestimated it and that means we overestimated it and it just doesn't, it's not good planning. I think Jack knows what we're talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, I, have a, I have a working budget spreadsheet that I use with all of that data in it to come up with these numbers. Right. It's just so good to see that. For, yeah, for absolutely. Purposes. Why are... Yeah. And you might have explained this. Why is it looking like estimated revenue sources are in deficit consistently? Oh, because it's at, because it's, I'm sorry, because it's credit. Right, right, of course. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. Good. Is there, maybe we don't want to talk about it, if, or if, if Kip's aware, the, the, the potential change in the Deerfield cost? Yeah, we can, um, I can keep, I got a couple other things. We can kick that a little bit. Maybe Carolyn will show up if okay. she wants to chime That's in. That's fine. I'm just looking at the spreadsheet size. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I do want to say, though, you asked at the last meeting, Jonathan, about the retained earnings for FY19. Yeah. Um, it is 412,882. Um, what was that? 412,882. Retained earnings from FY19. Um, so expecting that we would use that in FY21 
a hundred thousand of that is the operational reserves that we didn't spend that yeah. year that would roll over. Then we'd have the typical ambulance capital replacement of fifty-seven thousand dollars, and then that would leave two hundred and fifty thousand dollars of retained earnings <coughs> to offset the assessments. Or if we chose, or fund other things. Yeah. So that's because you would ask at the last meeting, you know, how this two hundred and thirty-one that we were applying here, how would that, how does that look in the future? Yeah. So we're pretty consistently in that two hundred to two hundred fifty thousand dollar range. Okay. Zach, okay. so I have a question because the the thing that I got from uh, DOR said that our retained earnings were five hundred fourteen thousand seventy-seven dollars for F for. FY19. For FY18, which is, that's the retained earnings that we're, we're using for the FY20 budget. How would you, how, how would they get certified if, if that wasn't the amount of retained earnings? So they were certified in... September. In... FY 19. 19. They were certified in FY 19 as the retained earnings left over from FY 18. So we're using that, we're, we're looking at those in this. But those were the last, that was the last amount that was certified. The, uh, I, I don't know when they're certified. The point being that that's the amount of money of retained certified retained earnings right. that we're looking at for FY twenty. The question moving forward was at the end of this fiscal year, what's what's the new amount going to be? How are you gonna know that? You don't, right? It's not yeah. certified yet, right. but we, we have an I you can estimate. Well No, I the, no? like uh, Brenda has her calculations based on what was left over from right but I, what i'm saying is this well, we need to I talk know. to an accountant about this I <laughs> well, it's, it's little, well i guess from my point is that the, the five hundred fourteen thousand dollar figure is what was left over and so that figure that you gave of 470 was it 472 or whatever? 412,000. 412,000. How did you come up with that? That's a calculation of what is anticipated? I mean, we don't even know what our final expenses are going to be. That is... My understanding... So this... We're, we've got overlapping... Like, we're, we're using retained earnings, like, from... Not the current year or the most recent year, but the year before, right? So the 514 14, yeah. is what was most recently certified as retained earnings. I guess uh, this is, Brenda needs to explain this. I, this was a steep learning curve for me about w how these numbers relate to one another, where are they coming from, and what it all means. Um, so, so you said last year we had five hundred fourteen thousand, right? Yes. Yes. So, out of five hundred fourteen thousand, we bought we bought the ambulance. We bought an ambulance last year. Well, we did, but it didn't come out of that money because we haven't we we couldn't spend that until after. Right. That would have come out of the Thank previous you. years. Yeah. So, um, so I think in, if, if I'm, I, I, I think I have, that Kip and I may be wondering the same question. Well, How much is total retained earnings? Right. Well, from what my gathering is that you know there was five hundred fourteen thousand dollars, and that money is still there. That's that was what was certified at the end of the year. That was left over from last year. We haven't actually gone into spending that. Not yet. But, but but we would spend it if we sure. bought a new ambulance and another oh, truck. Right. But is, I guess is, so. Is Kim, are you asking where is that reflected? That no, no. Points? I'm just when oh, I, I would. That's what I, I, I am. Yeah. What, what sparked my interest is when he said it was four hundred and seventy something. Yeah, yeah. And, and I looked and I said, well, geez, this is what 
I got from the state, so that's why I was just curious. No, it is. It's, it's just there and where it's it, and where it's reflected. Yeah. Okay, so to the where is it reflected question, that would be in the estimated or uh, the um, retained earnings money at the bottom of the second page. Yeah, uh, yes, the two hundred thirty-one zero seven seven. Wait, 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 two thirty-one. It says revenue sources at the bottom. I, I see that. Yep. I see for for fiscal nineteen, I see five, I see two oh four, six thirty retained earnings money. Yep. Two oh four three eighty two, two eighty four one forty five, three forty five oh seventy four to going back three years. Yes. None of those are the numbers that either you or Kip Right. So that's the amount of money out of the retained earnings that we applied towards lowering the assessments in those respective years. Okay, so am I right or wrong in this then that to see the 514 or whatever is left of the 514, if some of it has been spent, we need, we don't need a budget, we need a balance sheet. No, that's going, no, because that will give us our assets. Because retained earnings is an asset. Yes, so, I mean, a balance sheet's going to have assets and liabilities. Yep. Yep. And perhaps that's not been prepared for tonight, and maybe because it wasn't necessary. But I, I think, I think Kip, that's what you're going to, that's going to answer your question. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Right. But I, I'm, I'm, it still kind of makes me curious is where that four hundred and seventy-two thousand came from. Right. It's a, it's but, a random number out there. Right. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. So there's, this is the, for, th these, are, these are absolute questions that need to go to the town accountant. Okay. I, um, I, I'm fine. I'm yeah, fine. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm, I'm trying to, I, I'm catching myself trying to explain something that I don't want to describe something incorrectly and then. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, maybe, maybe she could come to one of our meetings or she could write what, what well, she does. Or? I think Johnson's ideas, I'll get a balance sheet from her and then I can bring that. Because it should, that, that should, that in theory, reflect yeah, the right. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Okay, I agree. And, yeah, and she has, she has told me she's more than happy to come to these meetings. So, whatever we want her to present or however we want her to present it. That's fine. Okay. <clears throat> so, what's our action for this budget or do, don't we have one yet? We have to we have to vote on it. Um, you know, Zach, when you let me ask you, when you uh, put in for the um, the salaries and stuff, I heard you say about a step raise and a two percent. We, we Deerfield hasn't really voted on that yet. So Correct. Are you just erring on the high side? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. Um, um, okay. So the the indirect costs. I think everybody was CC'd on this initially when Brenda gave an explanation, replied to you, John, with some numbers, and then I forwarded her worksheet out again today. The history is, as discussed at the last meeting, the indirect costs have been calculated as 10% of the budgets for the administrative services in the town of Deerfield related to the administration of South County EMS. And they were enumerated um, in a December 15th, 2015 memo for sure. Um, and that's what Brenda has been using to calculate it. And they include, uh, yes. Gary's got a copy in front of him. Uh, select board, town accountant's office, the treasurer collector's office, contracted services, uh, less the peg access cost, building maintenance um, for the offices included 
uh, and some associated legal expenses. So she takes that total amount and then 10% of that is how she has been calculating the administrative costs, the indirect costs. Now, a similar method is used for assessing indirect costs to the South County Senior Center and the wastewater treatment plant. And I believe there, somebody's hoping that they'll do the transfer station as well or something like that. But the way that they do it is they look at those agencies' budgets in relationship to the total town budget and what percentage that is. So if you were to look at it that way, the South County EMS budget is 6.45% of the total town budget. So if you applied the new percentage, it comes out to 47,302. Um, that is consistent with the way that the other departments are assessed similar fees. Um, Sounds to me like they did this formula when they went to uh, Key West. <laughs> At Sloppy Joe's? Yeah. I, sloppy Joe's, I mean, I, I, I hear everything you're saying and I understand everything, but it's like, where, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it just seems so random to me. I don't know. Well, I appreciate the additional legwork. Uh, Tom, you would agree with this that they've done to readjust these costs. I, 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 I think for me, I it, it would have been it would have been nice to see because uh, we had asked for for a breakdown of what what was actually being used. It would have, it would have been nice to to have a. I, I understand they taken a. a percentage um, and, and makes things a lot easier and I, I would think it probably reflects it should reflect we're probably using the office a little less now than when a when the first couple two three years when we had thing because um, that Zach Zach has been in the job for a period of time I, I mean I, I don't have a I guess philosophically I don't I have a problem, but factually, I don't have a problem. Is if we can get, if we can start working with the town over the next year and try to bring um, the actual cost forward. <coughs> does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah, I, does, do you, yeah. you know I, what I'm trying to say, I, don't you? Yeah, and I guess it's to me almost as confusing trying to c calculate how much you use it because. You know, I'm old school and I go to the accounts and say, well, you know, how many hours a week do you spend doing this, you know, and go to the town and say, you know, wh what kind of issues do you deal with? How much time do you spend doing it? The whole nine yards and then try to come up with it. But I, I can really see how things would ch can change so much. I, I, so I don't know what a good answer is. So I can't I really either. balk at this. You well, know, well, I, 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 don't know. I, I think that... I mean, if you break down the six line items. Easily the town accountants and the treasurer collectors line items are the most justifiable, e easily. Because it's payroll, it's, it, it's benefits, etc. cetera. Um, building maintenance, I, I, I just struggle with, I mean, we, we're paying rent for building maintenance currently for this building, I don't think that's what it's for, Jonathan. I think what they're, I think what they're alluding to there is the town offices. You know, if the town pays X amount of dollars to maintain the town office building, and a certain percentage of that time is spent doing things, so that's kind of where that comes yeah, from. Yeah, you know? I, I struggle with that. I don't think it's, I don't, I don't think it has anything to do with this building. I don't know what contracted services are. I don't see it broken down anywhere. What those are. Um, <coughs> Are, are things like you know to deal with our telephones or our computers and you know that types of things and then legal expense if we don't have a legal expense line item in our own skims budget shame on us 
I don't think that we should be using a town of Deerfield legal expense line item. I think we should have our own and we should anticipate what those expenses are going to be or not be and, and we can figure it out if it, if it goes over. We do have our own line item. It's $1,500. I think the difference here is when I'm on the conference call, when I'm calling the lawyer and getting those things, it's billed to South County EMS. When I ask a question of the town administrator and then she calls the lawyer, that gets, I, I think that's what they're trying to do but, there. But we don't have a, we don't have any itemization. We don't, we, we, we can't quantify how often you're using those, those services, be they legal, be they, we don't have that, that quantifiable number, so mm -hmm. I, I just think that going forward, we need to have a, a, an assessment done. We, we need to know what, and, and you need to do this as well. What do I ask of the town of Deerfield? And it may be that, oh my goodness, I didn't realize I asked that much. Mm -hmm. But it may be, yeah, I only talk to them once a month. So, when they, Zach, when you, when you do payroll, how, how, what happens? Uh, all of our staff, we fill out timesheets. I go through them, I sign off on them, and then they're delivered to the clerk's office, and their, their office enters them into... Also, they, enter, they do all the entering. They do all okay. the entering and yep. tracking of, mm -hmm. yep. okay. of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. That's why I'm going to say that the... Uh, the, the the accountant and the and the um, and the treasurer collector I, I that's a justifiable line I think they probably spend a lot of time on on, on payroll it's not just one or two key, key well, yeah because you got all your you got all your uh, your per diems and and such right yeah I mean, our rosters yeah it's like forty Eight. people or whatever right. yeah right so yeah so, so I, I would say doing payroll is is a time time consuming mm -hmm. process so yeah but the select board office. Well, I don't understand what that line item is. I mean, we have two select board members, or now I just guess two, sort of two, sort of mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. that sit on this board, but they shouldn't be compensated for that time. Uh, what's that? <laughs> no, I know. And, and I'm, I know it's probably, you know. I'm, but, I'm sure that all comes from uh, the, the office staff. I'm, I'm sure that's what it is. Right, but, but, but what, it, what, what functions are those? Close. Right, exactly. That's what I, and and it may be totally justified, but we don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but I, I I think that's one of the things that we should look we should look into after this budget cycle. I'll ask anyway. Just you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I, and because I I just know one thing. Now's the right right not the right time because everybody's doing so much. So, but I do think that after after June first, we should probably look into it. July first. Well, I was, okay, July 1st, that, that's fine. I, I would think that we'd have a better handle of what we were, and we can also, you're right, July 1st is probably better. Can we also let them know, um, hey, look, can, let, let's just put some things, maybe give a little presentation to us what we get, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and, but I think he needs to be a big part of that because he, it's got it's to wash between what they are providing and what he is asking them Absolutely. to provide. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and I'm fine with that. I mean, I again, I, I, I appreciate them coming down the number that they came down based upon new realities. Um, and, and so I'm, I'm, I'm less stressed about the dollar amount, but I am always stressed about improving systems. And if we can do it better, that's when making decisions supported by data as opposed to supported by maybe data, but we don't, we're not aware of it, then that's where my stress comes from. So I think we should have them come in and, yeah, yeah. I think you're right. Thinking of those presentation. Does anybody else have any more questions about the budget? This portion of the budget? What do you think, Jim? You okay? You want to talk about capital now? Sure. How about... Well, we're talking about the, re the retained earnings. What about the uh, the receivables too? Um, I know that plays a big role in this. As of the end of the year, we had six hundred and forty-one thousand five hundred eighty-nine dollars uncollected, and 
of that $464,176 was over 120 days. Um, I know in the past there's been a lot of discussion about, um, uh, I say, about not collecting and not putting too much pressure on people and stuff like that. I, I don't know, I, I feel that this organization is lacking some ability um, in going after this money. And I don't know if we should, you know, look into getting somebody else in here to do to deal with this or hire an outside firm. But it, it seems like it's an awful lot of money to be leaving on the table. Um, I know one of the, in, in in our past discussions we spoke about you know, this demand on, on people, and um, we have a process if somebody can't afford to pay their bill that there's a form and stuff. Fill up. Well, after talking with the accountant, there's only been two of those forms filled out out of over the last four years where we've had roughly 4,000 runs, if you will. Um, so I don't know what kind of efforts are really being put into collecting this money. Um, I just want you know, your thoughts. What, what do you, Zach, I mean, I, collection, collection <clears throat> versus... Uh, yeah, I, I <clears throat> want to reiterate that we need to make sh sure that we understand the way that emergency services, public safety agencies, EMS, bills, and how we expect to see that money. We have certain things, like our contracts with Medicare state, that we will bill them $100 for a service, and they will only write us a check for 40 period. That's what the contract so, is. So, so does that mean on that total that you're seeing to you may bill that person two thousand dollars and you're only seeing a hundred dollars and you did other nineteen hundred dollars so so there's a, there's a portion of that money which is just a reality of providing service yeah, right so that was my question it's not a defaulted loan it's just that yeah. every insurance carrier provides X percent of the bill that they're providing now let, let me qualify that by saying of people who are privately insured our collections are excellent. They are they hover somewhere between 93 and 96 percent, depending on when you take that snapshot. That last four percent represent copays that we didn't receive, things like that, um, or premiums that individuals didn't apply. That is a very s small percentage. We are our collections are outstanding, um, and. It's that remaining 6%, 5% that we've billed out to people that they moved and didn't get that bill, they're refusing to pay it. That's where we can start working with the collections agency and the credit reporting bureaus to find that, that money. Of <clears throat> Medicaid, Medicare patients, we will only ever receive a lower percentage. I think it's, we're in the, I have to find it. Um, but that difference in percentage, if we're only collecting say 80% of what we bill out, that difference is because Medicare says, we're not paying you anymore. And there are certain laws that prohibit us from then going after the person with Medicaid and Medicare for that difference in balance. The understanding is that they are receiving Medicaid and Medicare because they can't afford this on their own and we can't argue on how much Medicaid is gonna give us. So then the reality is we have to write the difference off. It's not a failure on our part to do our diligence or a failure on an organization to go after the money. It's just the nature of providing a service for anybody who needs it and then after the fact sending bills out. Well, and isn't it, and again, I'm digging into the Wayback Machine to remember when I used to write off the bills that Waitley, Waitley EMS wasn't getting collected. Mm -hmm. Even Blue Cross or other private carriers don't reimburse 100% of, of whatever they're invoiced. They, they, they have some percentage, much higher than Medicare and Medicaid, yes. but they have a percentage that they're not ever going to pay as, as well. So I, I think that to understand what we're doing well and what we're not doing well, 
I would argue that, and I'm just going to pick 50% for easy math. Yep. Medicare patients, because there are a lot more Medicare patients than Medicaid patients. If Medicare is only going to pay us 50 percent, 50 cents on the dollar for a, <coughs> a, for, for, for a bill, then we need to start writing that number off immediately so it's taken off the books so poor Kip Kamosa doesn't look at it and say, oh my God, we stink at collection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then we'll have an understanding of what the four, five, six percent is. That is it a deductible? Is it a copay? Is it is it whatever? I, because I got to believe that all of our billing goes through the insurance. We're not billing an individual directly. Sometimes. Why? Sometimes people don't have insurance. Well, okay, but for those people who have, but I don't know what percentage that is. Right. <coughs> um, I, Zach, let me. I can't find it in front of me. I have all those percentages, those numbers. Our collections on people without <coughs> insurance have, in 2014, were like four or five percent. We're up to 12 or 13 percent now, and that's because our process is improving and we're doing a better job of getting good information and getting out in a timely manner. So, and, and that's excellent, that 12 or 13 percent for people who don't have insurance get it. I, I'm sorry, it just resonated what you said. Massachusetts law is that they need, have to have insurance. Um, not all of our patients live in Massachusetts. <coughs> a lot of our patients are traveling through town, visiting oh. Yankee Candle or things like that. Okay. Um, you remember when you used to get hit by a car from some of the other states that didn't have insurance? Yeah, and so, and and that's well, I've never had that happen to me. I did. <laughs> it, 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 I was hit on uh, by a car from Connecticut that didn't have insurance back 1977. Fact, you're also required to have insurance, but the penalty for not having it is assessment. Was it on your taxes or something? And so there are people who choose not to carry insurance because <clears throat> okay. it's cheaper just to pay the but, penalty. But still, shouldn't we be writing off the, the, what the insurance carrier is just not going to pay? Because that should not be reflected in our collection. I don't believe. What I'd like to see is that does Comstar do all of our building? Yes. Building. So they they could provide us with information of you know how much was billed through insurance and what percentage we get paid, how much they uh, bill private individuals and what we get paid. So it would give us a good idea of you know what we are actually getting and how much you know if we are owed. And it'd be real easy to look at this and say okay, well, two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, instead, I know two hundred thousand dollars was. You know, because we only got fifty percent for Medicaid. You know, instead of the Kip, I get those reports on a fairly regular basis, and I know I presented them. <coughs> I I will make sure I get you and everybody on the boo the most recent numbers okay. when when mm, I good. when I met with the finance or the Deerfield Select Board for the other write-offs, and yep. I gave a presentation there. I was quoting from those numbers from the most recent um, report. Who's responsible for writing off our those those the, 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 the variance between insurance. Is it Deerfield? I think, I think Deerfield, yeah. yeah. And, and we've done, or I think <coughs> in the fall, we did some that were left over from Deerfield Ambulance, but yeah. we haven't done anything from South County EMS yet. But the reason I was asking this so much is because, as you well know, I'm probably not, I'm not the only one, so people ask me and I go, well, you know, so I, I want to find totally. out on this. So, um, totally. You know, and, and I'd like to understand better where it is because I get presented with this stuff and I go, wow, well, you know, let's just hold tight and yeah, see totally. what this is. Yeah. Yeah, I've got those I've got those numbers. I'll send out the most recent ones. I get those reports on a fairly regular basis. Um because we used to do it on a quarterly basis. We just wrote off Medicare. It's only gonna re you know, we got that fifty percent, it's in. <clears throat> Yeah. Yeah. It is what it is. It yeah. is what it is. Let's yeah. move on. Yeah. Some of that is time constrained for me. We didn't have a policy for write offs and collections until relatively recently here at, at South County. So part of it is just my time catching up. I've got David working on some of that stuff too, pulling all of those reports from Comstar, applying the rules and figuring out what is being written off, what would go to collections or things like that. So okay. um, do you do you think that, um, how can I say this? 
do you think that you're doing a good job as far as that goes, or is it, is it something that you know you're so busy that it would benefit us to have somebody to do that more? You know what I'm saying? Um, well, how, Jack, how about how about not answering that question right now, but be prepared to answer it at our next at yeah. Our next well, I, meeting. I I think. If, I mean, I, I'm not. I don't mean that you're not doing your job. No, no, no. I, no, no, I get. I'm just. So I'm trying to say. To do that. Asking me now yeah. in the middle of budget season, you know, th that is a very okay. low priority. Okay. If you ask me again in May or June, I'm going to be like, oh yeah, I'm going to spend the next two weeks and just you know trudge through everything and we'll be good to go. So. Um, that, that, that's why. Yeah. Because I think I think Kim's question is, is well taken, because. When, when we look at what we're paying that that forty six forty seven thousand dollars to the town plus may, maybe maybe it's something that we could hire a person you know and you bring a person in for that seventy thousand dollars total package and maybe you could hire a person to come in and, and do and, and do that and, and it would give you help plus yeah. it would also relieve you know from leave the town of their yeah. Also, and, and, may also and we could do a better job, revenue. and we could and we could get money revenue yeah. back. Well, that, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I, I don't know, but even say that you know, of this four sixty four, two hundred could be collected, sure. and we spent sixty on a person doing it. But you got that. Yeah, we're right. Right. I had a hundred and right. sixty grand. So, but we don't even know right yeah. now exactly. how much potentially could be collected. Because exactly. That's why we gotta you yeah. gotta silo that the the write off of because it is what it is. Sure as opposed to everything else. And if we, until we have those numbers, we can't have an intelligent but, conversation. But, but, I would, but I would, what I would say is that, I would hope that people realize is that we're going from, we're going from our initial operation to a more mature operation now, and those are the questions that we need to be asked. Right, absolutely. Because, because now, now we're getting past that first mad dash, and then we're, so now those are, that's what the kind of questions, so we're kind of switching right now also, Zach, as we're getting, as our as our system matures. Yeah, this isn't a criticism of Zach at all. No, but it, but but yeah. our system is maturing, and I and, you know, I'm working as hard as I can. <laughs> when we criticize you, we'll let. You know. <laughs> I appreciate hey, it. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, we would <laughs> criticize you, but it wouldn't be in this. I, I, okay, uh, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, we'll do that behind your back. You that's that's yeah. wonderful. I love it. Either be super obvious about it, or don't let me know. <laughs> all right. Um, uh, okay. I'm just trying to make some notes here so I can get the minutes after the meeting. Um, capital, do you want to talk about those two sure. items? The first one would be replacing the 2010 International uh, for $243,000. Uh, and that would be paid for out of retained earnings. The unknown number. The unknown number, the, we know the number for the retained earnings for this budget. Um, we do? Yeah. Wasn't that the discussion we just had? Or we, it's yeah. 400 Oh, no, no, no. Or? I thought that discussion was where, does that, where did that 400 come from? Which is that we, I, I know for certain what the retained earnings amount available to us for FY20 is. He doesn't know how they got there, but he knows how much. And how much is it again? 473000 and what was no, 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 no. Uh, what was your number from DOR? Five fourteen. No, no, no. It's hold on. Oh, oh. Here, here. This sheet here. Five hundred fourteen thousand zero and five hundred fourteen thousand and seventy seven dollars. Okay. Yeah. So never mind four hundred whatever. It's five. No, that you were asking about what will our retained earnings look like for FY twenty oh, one? I got you. <laughs> okay. And it'll be less. You're buying a new truck. Uh, no, but that that's not reflected, is it? It'll, it'll be, it is, yes, it'll be less. It'll be less. But that is also because this reflects multiple years of, ah, okay, of putting, like, putting okay. money aside yeah. for the ambulance replacement. Okay. So um, we're going to spend half of our money on a new ambulance. No, no. Let me ask you something. Some questions. So I guess what I want to say is, in our budget, isn't there a dollar amount, whether it be fifty thousand or hundred thousand, every year that we set aside for buying a new ambulance? Fifty thousand. Because what I, I right. what I hear a lot of is what when you just said, 
that $514,000 we're going to use to buy a new ambulance. The argument that I hear loud and hard is, wait a minute, retain earnings are nothing more than over-assessment. So, you know, now you're taking all this extra money and now you get to buy another ambulance, you know, where instead of it being budgeted, you know, it's just like, well, here we got this money, now we're going to buy an ambulance. Mm -hmm. uh, the, so part of the reason we have the retained earnings is because we conservatively estimate sure. what we're going to get from billing, just because we don't want to rely on that and then have the market fall out and then we're left sure. hanging with the understanding that that money will be put back. Right. Um, the other thing is that $100,000 of operational reserve sure. that if we don't dip into, great, because that $100,000 just goes back to fund itself the next year. Um, the, the other hurdle here is, and this came from the state, we can't create like an ambulance replacement account or fund or something like line item for that. To save. Right, so like we can't, we can't say, and this amount of money this year towards that, and then allow that to grow. It has to stay in this amorphic, amorphic, amorphous. No, I, I, yeah, and so so we we start doing these things where you see that five hundred fourteen thousand, and then I have to say, well, some of it is you know the previous years, and that, and and really, there's a hundred thousand in there. That's the operational reserve, and so. I don't know the best way to, it makes it difficult for me, keeping and, track and, of things. And, and I, I, I understand that. Yeah. I think I understand it better than some. And I, I try to do kind of what you just said, say, well, you know, there's a certain amount of money that's operational and a certain amount of this for the ambulance. And, but that's not the perception, you know, right, and that's yeah. what I'm, I'd like yeah. to have things that I can say, wait a minute, this is, this is it, you know, I don't, I don't have a problem telling anybody, you don't like it, that's too bad, but this is the way it is, but when I can't explain that, you know, it's like, yeah, I, you know, uh, what, uh, well, I, I lean on the boo, I mean, what's the best way to, I don't know, it's a good question, and again, I think I think we are in an envious position by you know because we can't do it with our fire department, we can't do it with the police department, we can't do it with our highway department, you know, because we're we're actually bringing we're actually bringing in we're we're bringing in revenue, right. and and that and that's and that's a thing. I I know like when, in the town when we do our local receipts, I mean let's let's say we we took in five hundred thousand dollars for the last six years for local receipts. I can pretty much guarantee we're not going to put the number $500,000 in our revenue because that may not come back at 500,000, it may come back at 400,000, so we always are conservative. So, so I understand why, why we, we do that. Now, with the way, I know one reason we, we were concerned when we first, when we first started about it, with with Obamacare and and how how that was going to affect you know our our returns all right now Obamacare is out so we you know are more people buying insurance they some people say they can have a better opportunity to buy better insurance now I don't know so so I don't know what's going to happen in the insurance so I I'd, I'd rather still right now play a little more conservative I I, I I, I'd hate to say, okay, we're, we brought in $632,000 revenue last year, so we're going to budget for our revenue side $632,000, and then we, then we only bring in $500,000, where the hell do we get the $132,000 from? So I'm, I'm more conservative when I look at budgeting. How much money is in the, the ambulance fund that Kip just mentioned? Probably two years' worth, I would think. Uh, you mean previously? Not in return to any earnings, but I, I heard Kip say, and, and maybe that we are budgeting, we are putting aside in terms of essentially, essentially capital stabilization. But it's, but, it, but it's not. It's not put aside. It's not it's put retained aside. earnings. It's, oh, it's still it, it part carries, of retained it carries, earnings. It carries, is it carries, yeah. So there's but, no there's no unique line item. No, no capital right. stabilization. But right. and the question I had, Jonathan, was I didn't know what was the dollar amount, and I think was it fifty thousand dollars. Wasn't it fifty thousand dollars that we tried to every year? I, I set 50, aside fifty-seven. Wasn't the replacement every five years? Yeah, yes, something like 57, that. So yeah, about fifty-seven thousand. So yeah, 
Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I, this, this actually, uh, the Sunland Select Board brought up an excellent point, which was... No, they did not. Come on. I wasn't there. He wasn't there. I would not have that sloppy joke down in oh, okay. the yeah. um, <laughs> That it, there should be a policy that the boo develops for how we use retained earnings. You know, be it priorities or percentages or things like that. Um, you know, and to help either guide the next year's usage of it, and then looking forward, what happens when the makeup of the boo and the administration totally changes? You know, and, and what what's going to be left to assure that that vision is handled? And that, that's what we do. That's what we do with our free cash and save all. You know, when we look at it, we we have we have a we have a, a policy that came. Be, you know, the the, the select board and the. Uh, Finance committee worked on a policy, so we could say, okay, we're going to uh, apply one third, one third of the to free cash to whatever, and ten percent goes to stabilizations, and so we we have a policy on where where things go. Although we're a little, so so we know how much money we're using going to be using for free cash to to offset the budget. Right, and I and I think that's what they're talking about. So, because we we put what how much like two hundred thousand dollars this year to help offset the assessment we're taking out. Yeah, two hundred thirty-one thousand. Yeah, yeah. We're taking out a retained earnings. So what they're saying is, is, okay, well, all right, we understand you're going to have money. Well, let's put a policy in effect so that and and if you want, I can work with with Zach to, to try to do something. We can start dis discussing that. Sure. That that may that may help. Explain to people what's going on. Okay. Right. I yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. That would that that's a good point, Kip. Because that would that would that would help that would help people say. We go to town meeting before, and it's like, well, how can we pick three hundred thousand dollars this year to, to to offset the budget? Right. And, and and that's and I I would really like that because what you just said is true. Because when you're confronted with people, especially at a town meeting or something like that, you know. Inevitably, you only get these big numbers that are out there. And wow, you got this and you got that. You know how much that adds up to be? Absolutely. And so, it, it, you know, a lot of times we all have a lot on our minds. So it's, especially as I get older, it's the cobwebs trying to get between it. I was like, I have all that info here, but trying to get it all out in that exact moment, it's, it's difficult. So to have something in writing or a policy, or, you know, this yeah. is what we do, you know, yeah. is... No, I, you know, I'll, I'll work with Zach if you want. I'll work with Zach and try to put together a policy that we can have in place for, for next year. Sure. Sort of a framework. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, so you can move off it a little bit if you need yeah. to. And, and, and part of it, it part, uh, what, what I would say right now is part of it would be what I would think is say, okay, we're going to use a portion to go to, of retained earnings that will go to offset the, uh, the next year's budget. You know, a portion is, re, you know, is going to be used for. Um, procurement of vehicles. Or yeah, right. Whatever it is, but yeah, we could, we could, put, we can work with that. Yeah, okay. and 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 that way, when someone said, "You can well, look, this is how we use our retained earnings," and then then somebody could then then we could discuss how we, you know even we could discuss at that point we discuss the uh, formula mm -hmm. instead of so it'd be more it'd be more of. Instead of arguing if we need to buy a truck or whatever, we'd be we'd be discussing the formula. Well, I think that would help us as a group to also talk about how how we lay out the budget, if you will, because I think that to your point, Tom, you never really know what the insurance is going to bring in. Uh, but I think we're developing a, a track record, and, and going forward, that's going to continue on. Mm -hmm. I think you know, from my perspective, it would be ideal to not have retained earnings much more than two hundred fifty thousand dollars. You know, I think that would be a good point because it's it would be roughly what twenty percent of our budget, and I think that would be a, a fair number to, to play with. I mean, but I mean, although it couldn't, how so? Be, because because if if um, if we put fifty seven thousand dollars a year into our vehicle for vehicle fund, I see what you're saying. Yeah. It, so right. so we have we, we have don't have work. we don't have a, a, a mechanism. <clears throat> to really say what this money is for. So, yeah. that, well, that, but that, but that's not right, though, is it? That, why that doesn't seem right. Why couldn't we create a stabilization line item in our budget? 
Okay, so so uh, why do, why do we have to create it? Well, <laughs> as opposed no, no, no. to why, no, no, why why couldn't one of the towns create it as a placeholder for scams? Yeah, could oh oh, as, so as a line item, scams pays that town to and then right. they have to okay. Maybe, maybe I don't know if it's legal, but why wouldn't we do that? <laughs> um, there was something weird about it being it's an enterprise fund not because, because sloppy jokes. Right. <laughs> well, because if because if 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 because then the let's use waiting on yeah the we'd have to you'd have to vote it out we'd have to vote it in and out right and that's questionable two thirds majority I mm. I, and again I don't know maybe there's something that we can work out yeah I don't, maybe maybe but I'm just there's there's you be careful what you wish for. I, oh, this, I, I know. Yeah. I, 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 I was, I was thinking what I was saying, but I'm just trying to think because Kip, you know, because Kip had a. Well, you just said, well, Kip said, well, two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and and that's that kind of the, the ambulance, I know. But but that's but that's kind of like our 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 policy predicated because we'll take our free cash down to a certain amount, right? Right? Because we said, okay, we're comfortable with, and that's exactly what we do. But we can sign so much to capital stabilization, so much to stabilization, so much to free cash, so much to right. offset the budget. Right. And and our comfort level with free cash is somewhat predicated on where capital stabilization or regular stabilization also stands. Absolutely. If that's real high, oh, then you know what? I'm okay having free cash a little lower this year because. Right. But when it's low, uh, you know. Right. So this uh, couldn't we just create our own line items for that? I mean, you know, all the money's in one pot, but as a group, we would always know that $50,000 of that retained earnings is good. good. I mean, that's the Tom's question of how do you yeah. do it with administratively? Yeah. Now, this would be another good question for Brenda, because she, she's learned a lot about stable, or sorry, enterprise funds and their administration, and she was the one who learned that we weren't able to do, so she might be able to answer these and maybe and if she's the one also accounting for everything, she might have some ideas on the best way to... What we did in Deerfield a few years ago, I, I, I realized that the way our sewer thing was all being charged and stuff like that was really kind of, I felt, unfair in that we only had one enterprise fund for our sewer system, but yet we had two sewer plants in two different distinct areas. And so uh, I, I went to the, the, the town... Um, I guess no, I went to Barbara, um, the town clerk, and I got all the receipts by uh, the zip codes. So that was real easy to find out which, how much we collected from Old Deerfield and how much we collected from South Deerfield. And uh, then we went and broke down the expenses from the two different plants. So even though all the money goes into one pot and it's one fund and everything like that, we have two separate books, if you will, as to where the income is and where the expenses, so we know how much each plant costs us. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I think we can we can work on something like that. But and again, so that's on the third reason we need to talk to Brenda. You also may want to have a conversation with Waitley, just because our water district is an enterprise fund. I mean, our, our, it, it's an enterprise fund, and how they do their capital. And I don't have the answer to this off the top of my head. Oh yeah. Hmm. And they they come to us for permission to spend their money, but it's their money. So it may be there may be parallels there mm -hmm. that we mm -hmm. you know and learn best practices. Well, we, the Deerfield does that too, and that drives me crazy because I I feel I'm not on the sewer, and but yet I get the vote how <coughs> people who do go. save the money spend it, you know, and I but. They don't yeah, that's the way it goes. I'm not, I, on, I, I'm, I, not, I, I'm not on Waitley Water, yeah, yeah. but I get a vote. Yeah. <coughs> but but when we created Waitley Water, whose tax dollars helped to create Waitley Water? Everybody's. Everybody's. Uh, so. Yeah. Okay. Oh well. Right. And that was good. Making that yeah, we did that. Talk about that, right, Gary? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. <laughs> I do too. I do. Um, <coughs> So the capital items, the ambulance replacement in FY20, and the additional vehicle. Wait, what additional vehicle? So
So in the capital requests, I submitted one for a rapid response vehicle and it would be used for any instance when a licensed transporting ambulance isn't needed. Um, so <clears throat> if we had an incident where we don't have to transport patients like hazmat situations, search and rescue, things like that, um, our options now are to take an ambulance and it adds additional wear and tear on the ambulance um, and the vehicle in order to meet regulatory requirements has to remain idling if we're there for extended periods of time. And it takes that ambulance out of service for Are you? additional calls. I'm sorry. Are you talking about another van type vehicle or are you talking just another? So he's I, talking about an SUV. Yes. And I initially oh. contacted all the local sister agencies about getting a hand-me-down and nothing is going to be available for at least 12 months and if and when one does become available there's no guarantee a year from now whether it's going to be fit for I, 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 have, I have an answer for this is that every year Deerfield gets a new cruiser and I've already talked to the chief about donating a cruiser for that purpose I think our well, it would be a 2014 Yep, and, and so that, that will become available in December, and we don't know what shape that's going to be in. I, yeah, it, I, I mean, is, is, yeah. the, is the only point I want to bring... Yeah. I, but, please. Okay. We, we don't... If there's a need, and I'm not sold on the need yet, because I'm not sure I heard exactly what its usage would be. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't sound like it's an emergency response on a regular basis. It is a response vehicle. So whether it is in the same condition, for lack of a better term, as an ambulance that is emergency response, mm -hmm. I'm not sure that comparison is germane. But if we're gonna spend for a new quote unquote command vehicle, it's gonna cost fifty to sixty thousand dollars. I my request was for forty thousand. That would be a bare bones vehicle mm -hmm. either a brand new bare bones vehicle. Um, or a used purpose-built thing. It wouldn't be a command vehicle. It's not gonna be built out like that. That's not the purpose of it. The purpose of it is to get um, additional equipment, smaller equipment, like our Lucas CPR machine up to Conway in a cardiac arrest, or additional personnel and resources out to the highway during a tanker rollover that can sit on scene with those people on a standby without tying an ambulance up to do that. Or running up to the hospital to exchange drugs and narcotics without having to take an ambulance okay. up there. And, and, and so... So 365 days in a year? Yep. Sometimes 366. Sometimes. How frequently is that vehicle used? And there's got to have been a plan and estimate, otherwise... What are we doing? I, the, we go out of town administratively in an ambulance two to three times a week. And looking forward to these other initiatives, these other things, uh, I didn't mention it earlier vocally, but we've been teaming up with Franklin County Sheriff's Office, Hampshire Hope, things like that, to initiate and launch some sort of um, DART program. It's for individuals and their families suffering from substance use disorders to do follow-up visits and things like that. And so looking at things like that, if we're gonna be teaming up or, or following up with people in the community, do we wanna be taking an ambulance to their house and parking it on the street and idling while we're doing these types of events? Um, standbys for football games or things like that, do we need to be idling a $243,000 ambulance at the football game or can we take this cheaper to operate vehicle, leave the wear and tear off the ambulance and bring that over with the necessary equipment in it already. So <coughs> those, those are those roles. Um, so, so I got a question. 
So, so I, I, I appreciate Kip's um, thought because it, it would get us, you know, then we can monitor, and I think it goes to what you're saying, and you monitor how it's used for the first year or two and see how it's being used, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I can understand, I can understand it, and I can appreciate the, the town's offer to do that. But I have another question for you. So how do we turn South County into a profit-making or, or reduce... Or not, not maybe make it a profit, but how how could we reduce our our assessment to the communities more? Could could we buy a transport ambulance and get into the transport business? And, and it's not, somebody's asked asked had asked that question, you know. And would that be your second or your command vehicle or whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it? But but do transports with it? You know, could we do that? It's certainly possible. There's a whole nother level of pre-authorization billing that I don't know anything about that we would have to explore just to make sure those things. And then there's the staffing requirements also. Yeah, um, understood. And, um, and, and the administrati administrative concerns or problems that you have to address about scheduling and creating those. But they're unknown but, that that the yeah. answer could right. But right. you know what, what he says is is enlightening because you know for the last couple of years when I've been sitting here you know I, I hear you talk about you know all these people like AMR they're in the transport business you know they don't do this they're in the transport business so that must be where the money is at mm -hmm. so you know if you did look to the future and buy just a, a, a bare bones ambulance a van type thing to do these transports you could hire um, you know because they usually just go during business hours you could hire a team and that would be their primarily yeah. sole purpose yeah you know and that person could you know actually do the scheduling out and yeah um, I don't know. yeah I, I don't know there's a lot of unknowns yeah. there I know that those large <coughs> the large privates work by economy of scale sure you know they have the contracts for all the discharges coming out of all the Bay State hospitals so they have eight trucks on and it, they're not going to be sitting idle for long and you know and they try to coordinate with nursing homes and get contracts like that. Uh, for us, we would be a small operation initially. I don't know what that looks like financially. But it'd be curious. I'd be curious. Yeah. And you, well, may, 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 again, maybe, and, and just start, <coughs> let's, let's start thinking of it as a more of as a business. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and again, I would say, you know, and, and in Zach, maybe that's how you, that's how you get this other, other vehicle, you know, and, and again, start. Let's start. Let's see how much we're using. It's two to three times a week, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, most of our town, we run our police, or not necessarily police, but your fire and your building inspector and stuff use hand-me-down vehicles to do exactly that type of work. Yeah. And, 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 you know, this past year, I know that we sold a cruiser to uh, Gill. And I was upset that we sold it for only two thousand dollars, but we had just spent good money just to. Know, go through service and stuff, yeah. And so I've been reaching out to them, and you know they've had it for three months and have a stitch of problems with it. You know, I said they're not that old, and I think the next one that's coming up is a 2014 or 15. So it's not a real old vehicle, anyways. So. Uh, my understanding with that vehicle was um, it, it had been promised to Gil long before I talked to John. Um, John relayed to me that. It, it was a stopgap measure for Gill, and it wasn't meant to remain in service for more than a few months. Um, that they were, they had some serious concerns about, it, um, and the costs associated with maintaining something like that. Yeah. Um, so far, they haven't spent a penny on it. But I, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, but I guess to go to bring it back to the budget. Yeah. If you'll forgive me. No, go ahead. I'm. I don't think I'm comfortable with approving a capital expenditure on a, on this thing right now because of all the other ideas that are percolating. Well, my, my, I, see, my biggest problem is that we're buying, we're buying a truck a year early, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and because, because of maintenance issues. And, and if we do have a, uh, an offer like that, then, then why don't we look at it and understand how that vehicle is being used? And, and, and get, get, some, get some time, I, I, get, I would get, get, get some time under our belt. And okay, it'd be nice, it, well, but, I think that would, that would show fiscal responsibility on our part mm -hmm. by not pursuing it this this year. Right. 
And, and, and if we find, and if we find, look, and if we find, if we find out that that the, the thing is a dog, then maybe then maybe we just have to come back and 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 use money out of retainer to buy something. But you know, I would say if we're using it two or three times a week, I mean, I would think, I mean, our our chief chief of police used a uh, you know a, an older vehicle for many years. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm with you. I, I just I mean, I think we need to to do some fact finding before we pull that trigger. Okay. Any more gear? What do you think? So I would think that we would need to we vote the budget. Vote and, the budget. And then we can vote the capital. Yep. Okay. All right, so I'll make a uh, um, entertain a motion from the floor for the acceptance of the budget as presented. Motion. The, the only concern that, or comment that I have is that even though we can vote the budget, if depending on how the salary scale goes, if it goes down, it would just be at a lesser amount. Take a, a motion. Uh, motion that should read uh, contingent upon uh, Deerfield's final um, um, personnel recommend personnel. It's increase. Not, it's not going to be a big yeah. amount one way or the other. Okay. Anyway, so. okay. Fine. You got that, Zachary? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, Contingent on the town of Deerfield's uh, uh, recommended uh, increases. Yeah, got it. So we need a second? Second. Motion. <laughs> <laughs> second, guys. Second. I <laughs> have a motion made. Second on the budget. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Yep. Four zeros. That. Great. Next is on the uh, capital re re capital request. Item one is a uh, purchase of a uh, a new ambulance. So we were going to basically have an ambulance like you just bought, right? Uh, yes, sister ambulance to that. And what happens to the 2010? It is traded in. It's traded in. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Fair market value, whatever we can get, we can get. Yeah, it's somewhere between seven and twelve thousand dollars. In the box, Ooh. in the box is not worth. The so I I outlined that in my director's report. I <coughs> I've looked into it extensively. Um, this the significant amount of expense with a new ambulance is the chassis and the wiring and the interface of the box to the chassis. So the quote I received was a remount of a box is going to be this box specifically about 30 or $40,000 less the price of a new ambulance altogether. Um, the downside is it can only go onto another international chassis. I mean, that's, that's the big downside right away. Um, I discussed, like custom work, the wheelbase, things like that, and they said, that box was on anything else, no problem. The international can only go on another international. The other thing too is that box is 10 years old, so you've got the relative fatigue and wear and tear on that, um, and you'd be lacking the most recent safety features and design features of the new box. Um, and you, if you remount, you're out the ambulance for the 300 days while they build it, um, so remounts make 300 days the, the the build time for a new ambulance is about 300 days. It's nearing 300 days. I forget what the 272 80 or something like that. Um, so, so are you saying in the future, so we're going to have three, three sister ambulances? Two sister ambulances and and the Sunderland truck. Sunderland okay. Truck. Yeah. So so at that point, will be, we be able to our next go around? Swap boxes. I uh, so the the swap the remount makes most sense when the vehicle is relatively new and the problem exists with the chassis, like in an accident. So if that vehicle is out of service already and the design is up to date and it's not fatigued and you're just going to put it on the exact same chassis and call it a day, that's where that savings makes a lot of sense. There's no there's no reason to throw it away. Um, <coughs> once the vehicles start to reach the end of their usable service life, that's where you start saying, okay, well, do we want to retrofit this and, and put it on a new unit and assume 
problems with splicing or, or things like that for a relatively small amount of savings. In fact, um, do you know if that international truck, the ambulance part of it, was made by the same people that made the Ford that we just recently got? It is different people. Different people. Yeah. Because I remember we Deerfield paid a lot of money for that particular box because that was what we were sold on. Mm -hmm. You know, you can always take this box off and put it on anything. And you know, I understand your point that some of the safety features might not be there or they've changed it. But you know, uh, to what extent? How do we know that we're not going to? hear the same thing when we go to get another truck that well you know we can't do this because it's like that or you know yeah I, I, I think a thirty thousand dollar savings is a lot I, I'm not sure I find it hard to believe that it takes a whole year to put an ambulance together but you know yeah. I, I haven't spoken to any of these people I did read their website and uh, they put out hundreds of these things every year so I find it hard to believe that if you want one, that it's going to take a year to do. Which company but did you look at? That PLS. PL Custom. Yeah. PL Customers. You know. Yeah, uh, I, so I, I mean, I just. Yeah, these are the times that are quoted to me, and as a result of those times, is why we're seeing such a significant savings on this ambulance versus the previous one. Is that they are they acknowledge these long durations and they are accepting smaller profit on them in order to keep the orders coming in. Um, the, the fact that a remount would have to go back onto another international and, you know, we're looking at those same associated costs, this, the trips to West Springfield, all those things, and we wouldn't have parity across the ambulances, so things are in different places everywhere and things like that. That's... Well, who, why did they tell you that only has to go on another international? I, I, they don't, they don't sell the chassis. We purchased right. the set, the, it doesn't, if it could go on a Ford, they would be happy, 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 happy to sell us a Ford and do the remount. It's not, I, I don't think there's anything nefarious going on there. I, I believe their engineers when they tell us that, that it's not an option for that vehicle. So what's the price on the new ambulance again? Uh, two hundred and the capital request is for two hundred and forty-three thousand. That is the cost of the vehicle plus um, miscellaneous equipment minus the trade-in and the detailing and all that. Kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'll make a motion to. Do whatever we have to do. <laughs> <laughs> to 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 purchase or to to budget two hundred the the number that Zach has for uh, a new ambulance to replace the international. Second now. Hey, any discussion? Any continued discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Zach, four zero. Second part was a uh, response vehicle. What do you call it? Uh, special emergency response vehicle, special response vehicle, something like yeah, that. Response nature? response vehicle. Um, do I have, have anybody have a motion to uh, purchase a response vehicle? It would be good if we had a, a motion and a second so that we could vote no. Or yes, <laughs> but I'll, I'll I'll make a motion. Okay, I guess we got a motion. I'm done opening up Pandora's box. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I think it's I think it's important. Okay, again, in my in my opinion, I always think it's good that we we take a vote so we, we show people what we're talking about, you know, and it's recorded that okay. way. Okay. So I got a second from Gary. Yeah. All right, any discussion? I'll, I'll lead off. I, I think that if Deerfield is going to offer a cruiser, we, we should look at that and put some documentation on how, how it's going to be used, where it's going to be used, when it's going to be used. And, and I, I think it would, it would be showing fiscal responsibility to uh, our ratepayers at this, at this time. 
I, I would just add to that, that, and I greatly appreciate the offer from Deerfield Police to, to provide the vehicle. There were just too many unknowns to purchase a, a, either even a used vehicle right now for this for, for this purpose. And just look, we need questions answered so we have data so that when people ask us why we bought this, we'll have. I mean, Kip's done a good job throughout the meeting talking about how he just needs an answer when people ask him Absolutely. what the, the money is about. And um, and we don't have those answers right now, so I, I just don't think it's the right place to time it. Yeah, I'd vote no as well. I, I think that, uh, you know. Well, let's be clear, we haven't had a. <laughs> we're not voting, we're not <laughs> voting yet. We're still just <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, 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 when I reached out to John and asked him, I, I was pleased that he was willing to do that and you know to the, the town of Deerfield it, it's in, insignificant so you know we'd like to just donate it to the town and, and let Zach use it and see like you said Jonathan how much use it really needed and how it helps and Zach might come back and say you know yeah, it's nice and it's convenient but you know it hasn't really been that much of a big deal and so yeah we're happy with it or you know he might come back and say yeah we use it this that and the other thing but you know, I found now that you know an SUV might not be what we're looking for. Maybe we are looking for a van type thing. So, mm -hmm. and there's no expense to you know our organization. That way, so. so the only question that I would have is, save for the four of us, the five of us going out with our can of spray paint, once we get the vehicle, where's the budget to detail the vehicle to say South County EMS? I think that the. the believe that Deerfield police are just decals. They could be removed and you could just buy a, his arm patch big ones and put it on the doors. Yeah, if, if we wanted to, assuming that they didn't strip radios out of it and use it for their next vehicle. Well, so, they, they do take yeah, most of their stuff. Um, but. And then any sort of emergency lighting that we wanted to carry over would have to, we wouldn't be able to be reused because it would all be blue. Um, but I really, I mean, aside from a vinyl patch or something right. on the door, yeah. But to your point, I think we do need some level of funding to make sure that whatever we are donated by Deerfield Police is more than just, you know, the Chevy van you bought in high right. school. I, we do have a vehicle maintenance allowance, and I can't imagine it would be more than a thousand dollars to change this over. Okay, so, as long as it's covered, that's all yeah, I'm. I would say you could you could cover that out of your vehicle maintenance. A, <clears throat> a decal, no problem. If we had to start buying radios or something, I don't. But we don't know even. What I, I, well, that's the thing, can. right? So, so. Well, 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 would it make sense well, to just make a donation to Deerfield Police Department for thousand dollars, then have them leave their radios in there? You it know. could be. I I I don't really know. What do you do when the radios are going to come out of the old, the, the other uh, truck? They would be put in the new truck. All right, so you're planning and swapping yeah. them over? Yeah, all, all that stuff, the stretcher systems, the safes, the radios, okay. all that. <coughs> so I, my only concern is that all of a sudden we're not sitting here in six months after we've gotten this generous donation and we don't have the money to sufficiently equip this new vehicle so that so we don't start having so, so, make, so make a motion for two thousand dollars to fully equip. Yep, you, you you need you need you need radios. The radios are eight hundred to a thousand dollars, right? We just need to. I'll make a motion for a, a twenty five hundred dollar line item to ensure that South County County EMS can satisfactorily equip the vehicle, the donated vehicle, the donated vehicle. <clears throat> Uh, instead of the capital expenditure. Would this, would this be an additional line item in the budget? No. Would we just understand that it would be paid for out of operational reserves or something like that? Approved That's by the I boot? That's why vehicle maintenance, wasn't it? I, I think you, well, you, you could do you could do it under you could do it under capital. Couldn't you do it under cap, your capital? Okay, yeah. Uh, under the capital. It's just a you're small capital item. Is you're because you're, you're buying capital. Right? Okay. Radio, radios, lights. Sure. Right. Right. All right. So let's take the vote first on the on the vehicle. We have a motion made, second, and everybody's commented. Mm -hmm. 
So who, all in favor of purchasing a response vehicle, say aye. All opposed, nay. 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 So zero four. You have a motion now on capital expenditure for twenty five hundred dollars to outfit the donated the donated vehicle. But it won't come. Okay. Radios, but to, to outfit the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Do we have a second on that? Second. <clears throat> Discussion. Uh how did we come to the twenty five hundred dollar amount? How did we come up with it? Yeah. I have to tell. I mean, it's 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 more than enough. If if you use if if you think the radios are eight hundred to a thousand dollars, you know. I, I mean, I, yeah, I like it, I just it, 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 there's a there's a cushion there. Okay, I, we think. I, a, yeah, I I mean I haven't outfitted anything know. like I, right. I, I, I don't know, know what it's gonna yeah, I. So because we don't know, we need a cushion. And, and, and well, and, and the fact is, you'd go look now if if, uh, if you have to mount the if you have to mount the radio inside, and the radios are two three thousand dollars. Then what do you do? You buy a handheld. Sure. Current right. radio system is not designed for handheld radio use. Huh? Our current radio system is not designed for handheld radio use. The, it's a four hundred eighty two megahertz doesn't doesn't allow for. The uh, system was built out for mobile radios only. Really? Yeah, yeah. The handhelds are only good for on scene, like. Like direct line, line of sight. Of sight? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That's why <clears throat> Sunderland police can't talk to dispatch at any of the apartments, Cliffside, Squire Village, or anything like that. I, well, I, 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 I was I, I would be con I'm I'm concerned because we go to eight hundred megahertz because I mean Yeah. Because it's it, it it's less for going up and down the hills the, the lower frequency is better at that. But. Their system is better designed though. And, and knowing where your repeaters are very is, yeah. is critical to us. Right. We're getting off topic. Well, if, 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 if the costs are that high, then we'll come back to the table. Right. We, and, and in Kip's right, you get it out of your uh, vehicle vehicle maintenance fund if we have to. And right. Gary's idea is a good one, that if, 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 if there's a price that, that works for the town of Deerfield to uh, donate the, equi the equipment that's already in there, yep. so they can then offset the purchase of new equipment, those conversations should be had. Yeah, just talk to Jane. I'll ask him that too. Yeah. All right, motion made and seconded for uh, $2,500 for capital for uh, outfitting the uh, response vehicle. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yep. Aye. Zach? Four zero. I think I'll have to resubmit this as a new capital request, at least to the town of Deerfield, right? Well, or yeah, amend it, it, the existing? No. Well, you, no, you just amend. You're going from forty thousand to twenty five hundred. Yeah. Right. You can amend it. Okay. I would think. And you haven't submitted Kip, this. Kip will deal with the finance committee, dear Phil. Yeah. Uh, uh, everything's been submitted. There was a to all towns. All towns have it. They're still waiting for the final approved version. Um, but the capital request deadline was like January first or something. Right. Dear yeah. So yeah. It, yeah. Um, Okay. Sorry, Jack. Yeah. No, it's fine. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> gotta, send out, gotta, gotta send out a boy toys sometimes. Hey, I, I was saying I, I was going to try for the spider, but you know the spider motorcycle for him as a response for you. All the fun of driving a car with all the weather protection of a motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Rather just a motorcycle. <laughs> Well, maybe we can work a deal on that, too. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. What, how's that going to go? Oh, I don't know. All right. Um, go through the capital. Great. So, so you got anything else? Uh, no, that's it. This is great. Okay, um, motion to adjourn. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and motion made. Second, all in favor say aye. Um, give me uh, whiplash. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> four, 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 three, one. Kip wanted to keep going, but we all voted. No, that's not <laughs> <laughs> In theory, I think.